Game cameras are a complex beast. For many players, how your camera feels to use is key to giving them a positive response to your game. If you know anything about me, you'll know I'm a huge fan of simulation and strategy games. And I've found a good number of these games do weird things with the camera. Look at this game. This game rotates around the center of the world. Look, this one does it too. Doesn't that feel nice? And then we have this one which- Ah, why are you going left? Perhaps it's personal preference, but when I enter into a simulation game, and I'm looking down at the world, but my camera controls act like I'm in first person, it's just a little bit jarring. Screw you and your goddamn trains. So, fellow developers, please stop designing your strategy game camera with the first person controllers these engines give you out of the box. 99% of the time it's not a suitable way to interact with your game, it just feels weird and janky, and it's infuriating to control. The camera should be world relative. <sighs> Hi there, I'm Matt and welcome to Game Dev Guide. In this video we're going to take a look at building a camera system you'd expect to find in a simulation strategy game. We're going to look at how we set up our camera so that it can be moved while maintaining a centered focus point on screen. We're then going to look at how to extend these features to allow for smooth zooming and panning. We're then also going to build a focus feature that will allow us to keep the camera locked onto and follow a game object in our game. Before we get started though, I just want to remind everyone about the Game Dev Guide Discord server. It's full of all ranges of viewers and developers from the community who are raising interesting questions and sharing their work with everyone. I've even managed to see some of the cool stuff you've been creating based off of these videos, which is always absolutely amazing to see. And as a bonus, if you join, you'll even get to be able to influence some of the content on this channel as I'm regularly putting questions to members about what they like to see, including the content in this video. So if you want to be part of a growing community over on Discord, there's a link in the description below to join. Now, let's get started building our camera system. Here's a scene you might see in a typical strategy game. It's a city made up of assets from the low poly city pack and will be perfect to use to build our camera system. So a big thing I think a lot of these games get wrong is that they move relative to the camera itself rather than what the camera is looking at. And this makes sense, right? If you're in a first person game, that's what you want. If we rotate the camera, it simulates somebody turning their head, which is fine for a game where the player is positioned directly into the world. But strategy games are more omniscient and godlike. The player is probably expecting to interact with the world as if it's a physical object in front of them. So we want our camera to simulate the world moving rather than the camera moving. This is actually quite simple to achieve. All we have to do is rig the camera to a parent object and then offset the camera, pointing it towards the center of this rig. Then instead of moving the camera, we move or rotate the rig itself. So let's create a new game object and call it camera rig. Let's then place it here at about 120, with a Z position of 60, and we'll set the height to about 10, so it's a little off the ground. Then let's place our camera inside the rig and bring it to the center by clearing the transform here. Now let's rotate the camera about 45 degrees in the X axis, and then let's move the camera back to about 50. If we grab the blue forward handle here, we can see that the Y position and Z position move in the opposite direction to one another. This is our forward distance, which acts as the zoom for our camera rig. So the zoom is essentially how far away our camera is from the base of the rig. All right, so let's get started writing a script that will allow us to move our camera around. Let's select our rig and create a new script here called camera controller. Let's create a public float at the top here called movement speed and another called movement type. Let's also create a vector3 called new position. In our start method, we'll set the new position to the transform position so that our transform doesn't automatically default to zero. And then below, let's write a new method called handle movement input. In here, we'll get the keyboard input from the player. If input.getKey, keycode.w, or input.getKey, keycode.up arrow. Just as a side note, so many games lock input to either WASD or arrow keys and not both. And if you do this, players like me will be annoyed at you. So always support both, please, thank you. In here, we'll make the new position, the forward direction of the rig, multiplied by the movement speed. So new position plus equals transform.forward multiplied by movement speed. Then let's simply handle this for the other directions. Then 
Then rather than just setting the position of the transform, which I feel is kind of rough, let's actually interpolate between the current position and the new position to get a smooth movement. Transform.position equals vector3.lerp. Transform.position, new position, time dot delta time multiplied by our movement time. And then finally, in our update, we'll actually call this method. Now, back in Unity, let's set the movement speed to 1, and let's set the time to about 5. As you can see, we've now got a nice smooth movement of the camera, and we can play with the values here in the inspector to adjust how it feels. It's also pretty common in a game like this to add a fast forward mode for the camera, so players can move long distances quickly. Let's also add that into our script. So we'll create a public float called normal speed and another public float called fast speed at the top here. Then back in our input method, let's determine the speed based on if the shift key is down or not. So if our shift key is down, let's use the fast speed here. Otherwise, let's use the normal speed. Then back in Unity, let's just set our normal speed to 0.5 and our fast speed to three. And as you can see here, if I move with the shift key down, it's nice and fast. And if I let go, it slows down. So we give the player much more control about how they move around our world. Now, I would be criminal if I didn't spend a minute talking about the projection mode. Classic Tycoon and management games were loved for their orthographic style and that might be something you're going for. So to replicate that look, let's stick our camera into orthographic mode and set the size here to about 30. Then let's set the Y rotation of the rig to about 45 degrees. And just like that, we've got our classic Tycoon management shot. So I was actually designing a game camera like this myself until I started looking at a few other games and realized something. I was playing Two Point Hospital when I noticed that while I was under the impression that the game was using an orthographic camera, it was in fact actually using a perspective camera. The easiest way to tell is because with an orthographic camera, all of the points of geometry are parallel. So you can tell when a game is perspective or not, because as you move the camera around, more geometry becomes visible, such as sides of walls or objects around corners. You can also notice a field of view change when the camera is fully zoomed out, looking over the hospital. And here I am realizing that this game has done something really clever with their camera to replicate the old school orthographic style, but still adding a small amount of depth. Essentially, an orthographic camera is just a perspective camera with a field of view of zero. So with our camera here, if we switch back into perspective mode and set our field of view much closer to something like 10, and then move our camera way back, like so, you can see that we've got a sort of pseudo isometric style and so if I swap between the two here, you can see the difference. If I move the camera around a bit, you can really see the difference between the two. The perspective shot has that extra bit of depth that really makes the 3D environment pop a bit more. And I really like it. Okay, so our camera is moving nicely, but right now it's stuck at this one angle. It would be really great if we could rotate it. At the top of our script, let's add a new quaternion called new rotation and a float called rotation amount. Then in the start method, our new rotation will be the same as the rotation of our rig. And in our input method, let's add to our new rotation if the player pressed the Q or E key. So input.getKey, keycode.Q, new rotation times equals quaternion.Euler, vector3.up times rotation amount. And then for the other direction, if input.getKey, keycode.E, new rotation times equals quaternion.euler vector3.up times minus rotation amount. And again, let's lerp this so it's nice and smooth. Transform.rotation equals quaternion.lerp transform.rotation new rotation time.delta time multiplied by the movement time. And then Let's set our rotation amount to one here. And if we play, we can see a nice smooth camera rotation. 
Finally, we're probably going to want to add support for zooming the camera. In our script, let's add a reference to the transform of our camera called Camera Transform, a new vector 3 called Zoom Amount, and another called New Zoom. And in our start method, we'll get the new zoom from the current local position of our camera transform. We need to use the local position because we want to make sure that it stays relative to our rig. Then in our input method, let's add our zoom. So if input.getKey, keycode.r, new zoom plus equals zoom amount. If input.getKey, keycode.f, new zoom minus equals zoom amount. And again, let's lerp that. Camera transform dot local position equals vector three dot lerp. Camera transform dot local position, new zoom, time dot delta time multiplied by movement time. And then in Unity, let's assign our camera and set our zoom amount to minus 10, 10. And now, as you can see, we've got a pretty functional strategy camera complete with movement, rotation, and zoom. Great. Now, I could end this here, but let's be honest, keyboard controls aren't always ideal, and as you know, I never do things half-assed on this channel. Let's take a look at how to interact with the world using the mouse. In our script, let's create a new method called handle mouse input, and we'll add that to the update method. Now we could simply get the mouse position when pressed down and move the camera according to the difference here. However, due to the potential rotation of the camera and the rig we've got, I found it feels a bit janky to do it that way. Instead, we want to simulate the player actually clicking and grabbing the world, pushing or pulling it in any direction of their mouse cursor. So we're going to create a plane in our world and cast a ray from our camera to get a precise point in the world that the player has clicked and then calculate the difference that way. At the top here, let's create two vector threes drag start position and drag current position. Then in our handle mouse input method, let's check if the left mouse button has been clicked. In here, let's create a plane, plane equals new plane, vector three dot up, vector three dot zero, and we'll create a ray from the mouse position on the screen equals camera dot main dot screen point to ray input dot mouse position. Then let's create a float, which we'll use to get the entry point of the raycast and we'll do our raycast on the plane. Then we'll set this point as our start position. Next, we'll check if the mouse is still held down and if it is, we'll do another raycast. So let's copy this and paste it in here. And instead, we'll assign the entry point to our drag's current position. Finally, we'll assign the new position by getting our camera's current position and then adding the difference between the drag positions. Now, back in Unity, thanks to the mouse input and the lerping we've already built into our camera movement, you can see that we can easily click drag and flick our world around nice and smoothly. While we're here, let's add some mouse zoom. At the top of our input method, let's add if input.mouse scroll delta dot y doesn't equal zero, new zoom plus equals input.mouse scroll delta y times zoom amount. And with just a couple of lines, we've got zooming working on the mouse wheel. Great. The last thing we want to attach to our mouse now is rotation. To the top here, let's add two new vectors, rotate start position and rotate current position. And then in our mouse method, let's add if input.get mouse button down, and we'll use the middle mouse button. Rotate start position equals input.mouse position. And then if the mouse button is still held down, Rotate current position equals input dot mouse position. Then we'll calculate the difference. And we reset the drag position for the next frame. And then we'll create a new rotation based off of the difference. 
So new rotation times equals quaternion.euler vector3.up multiplied by negative difference dot x divided by 5. We negate the value here so that the world spins in the counter direction to the drag. I just think it feels much more natural this way. As you can see here in Unity, if we now drag and pull this way, the world spins in the opposite direction to the mouse, as if we've spun the base of the world. Right, so that's the gist of our camera controls. The one final thing I'd like to do is allow the player to focus on an object and have it take possession of the camera, something you'd likely expect to find in most management or strategy games. So, I've got this car here that's moving around and I want the camera to follow it when it's clicked. Let's set that up in our camera controller. At the top here, let's add a transform called follow transform. Then in our update method, let's check if the follow transform is active. And if it is, let's set that as our current position. Otherwise, let's allow for the input. Then let's also allow the camera to be unfocused by setting the follow transform to null when escape is pressed. Now finally, we just have to tell our object to set itself as the follow transform on our camera when it's clicked. So for ease of access, let's create a singleton reference on our camera here. Then let's create a quick script here on our vehicle. We have a collider on the object already, so let's add the on mouse down method and set it as the anchor point. Camera controller dot instance dot follow transform equals transform. Now, as you can see, we have a very simple follow function for our camera. If we click the vehicle, our camera jumps over to that. And then if we hit escape, we reset the camera. Now this probably doesn't cover every use case, but hopefully it gives you some ideas of things you can do. And more importantly, you understand the importance of world-based navigation rather than the awful first person navigation that absolutely does not belong in a strategy game. I'll get off my soapbox now. That's it for this guide. I hope you found it useful. Let me know what you think in the comments. And if you've enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like button. If you're new to the channel and want to see more tips, tricks, and tutorials from me, then please hit that subscribe button or check out some of the other videos already on the channel. As always, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you again next time.